terms of chairs involved, one way to try to support people who are about to be sanctioned. Now, this uh, severely disabled individual, I won't keep names obviously, severely disabled individual who hasn't worked for about 25 years, they uh, got the uh, dreadful phone call from um, a, a, fit, a back fit to work program to attend a fit to work program. She managed somehow, with the help of many friends, to attend. And after interview, she was deemed fit for work and sanctioned for three reasons. The first one is that she'd be able to take part in a call centre activity in work because she received the call, the answer the call from the fit to work. The second one was that she was able to travel, and could travel for work because she travelled to the interview. And the third and most insidious one was that she could be um, get work in education because she dared to attend the course on diabetes arranged by the health service. That's what these people are about. <coughs> you need that. Congratulations to, to the panel for uh, such an erudite um, representation of being such a champion for uh, a group under such uh, severe pressure. God bless you. May. Um, so I think this is an important motion for us 
It's looking to the past and acknowledging the past, but actually as a way to move on and help build on the future for this city. Lord Mayor, Mayor Anderson, colleagues, Ni Hao. Um, may I say, um, Councillor Mumby and myself wrote this motion together, but actually, I think we need to put into context, I didn't know much about the three shameful acts that happened en route and through Liverpool between 1916 in 1920, let's understand that 96,000 Chinese came from North China across the Pacific, across Canada in blacked out trains. They were not allowed to see Canada or meet the public. And many of those individuals took sick coming across the Atlantic, and several died, and are now buried in Anfield Cemetery. They then went on to the Western Front, and they joined another 54,000 Chinese, 150,000 Chinese heroes, who dug trenches, who fixed tanks, who cleared bodies, and at the end of the Great War, they dug out graves, they filled in trenches, and they buried our heroes. Nobody knows. Completely forgotten about. And what was the thanks that they got? They were forced to come over, and then they were sent back with no thank you whatsoever. And every year, and including my year as Lord Mayor, we said, lest we forget. Well, actually, in this particular instance, not only did we forget, we didn't know what they did. 150,000 Chinese from North China completely obliterated from our memories. And that is absolutely disgraceful. So I thank the Mayor for his comments, and I thank Steve Lau for his ensuring We Remember campaign and bringing it to Councillor Mumby and I's attention. And we will do what we can to make sure that here in Liverpool, but also in London and in France, that we don't forget 150,000 individuals who weren't allowed to fight. But Steve Lau tells me today, even though they weren't allowed to fight, many died. And they died because very often the Germans would actually steal a march and they get over the trenches. And there was a Chinese in the trenches, building them, protecting them. And the Chinese had shovels. And the Germans ignored them. They didn't fight them. They didn't try to kill them. Except what the Chinese did, is they would gather round the Brits. They would gather round our heroes and become a shield <coughs> to protect them because the Germans weren't going to attack them. One officer, a senior officer, his life was saved by 15 of those Chinese individuals. They protected him in a shield and he was saved and everyone died. And that story wasn't mentioned until many, many years after the war. That's so sad. How can we forget those things? And then we go into 19... 42, and the Chinese community in Liverpool, our community, our citizens, our voters, with British and Irish wives and families, worked as mariners and seamen in the docks, and discovered that the British were being paid double the wages, double the wages. And they took a stance and said, this is ridiculous. This is not slave labour. We want the same deal as everybody else. It's about fairness and justice. And that's what I stand here as a Labour councillor want. Fairness and justice. Equal pay. We talk about living wage and whatever else. 
And in those days, in 1942, they were penalised. So when it came to the end of the war, and they did what they had to do, when 90% of our trade for the UK came from Canada and across the Atlantic to actually feed us and give us power and give us food and to go across to the front again. At the end of the war, they were refused show jobs. They were told they had to take a two-thirds cut in their wages. And if they didn't agree to anything, thousands were sent to China. Could you imagine every one of us not going home tonight? We're on the ships and we're being sent somewhere. Our family's not being told. How do you think they would feel when Peter Fu stood there and in 2002 discovered for the first time his dad was forced to go to China? And yet he should have been here in Chinatown, possibly sitting in that chair as Lord Mayor. He never got that chance and his family never got to see him ever again. Imagine how you feel. We've let down our Chinese community nationally and locally and it's time we recognise that and we will recognise that and we have to do our damnness to make sure what we do in Chinatown is not just for our benefit but also for, as we proudly keep saying, the oldest Chinese community in Europe. Proud to say it but let's show our friends, our families the respect that they deserve. Thank you colleagues.